the five step approach for BPR. So, in BPR when you are going to develop a BPR process there are five approaches. So, what are those? Step 1 develop the business vision and process objective objectives. Actually when you are developing a strategy plan your organization also what you are doing is you have to have a good vision and objectives to achieve that. In your organization also you will have a vision and mission. So, you should have a very good vision and process objectives as the first step in uh, doing a business process re-engineering approach. Step 2, I do not, I think that I do not want to uh, explain about what are the vision and what are the objectives. So, you may uh, heard this in several way, ways, in several places. So, step 2, identify the processes to be de redesigned. So, processes that are to be redesigned has to be identified. So, there can be some of the process those are um, malfunctioning and those processes are giving a very low income to the uh, organization. Sometimes there are no more people to operate that one. Sometimes te technology wise there are no technology involvement in those processes. So, it is getting delays all the time. So, you have to identify what are those processes and you have to redesign those processes. And step 3 is understand and measure the existing processes. The existing processes what you have to be understand well. So, you identify the processes that has to be redesigned and then you are understanding the measures, the existing processes what you have in your organization. So, existing processes will be understanding about how it works. The identify the changes to be implemented in all of those processes. Step 5 is build the prototypes. So, you have to build the prototypes. This is how your BPR will be implemented. It is kind of a uh, pictorial way or descriptive way you can build that prototype. So, uh, in the questions, uh, as the question uh, Devonport and Short 1990, in 1990 prescribe how many stage approach to BPR. Uh, to BPR, it was uh, explained by Devonport and Short in the study pack. So, it is directly given here. So, uh, how many steps? 5 steps. Problem with BPR. So, are there a problem with BPR? Yes, there can be problems. What are those? Any successful BPR programs is like to result in a significant changes that will affect staff widely. Actually, the staff are the staff with the human resource who are working in the organization. So, they are the people who are working in the all the processes that are to be redesigned and improved by the BPR approach. So, then they are the people who are facing these changes. So, that will mainly affect to the staff. Sometimes they will be discouraged because they will be saying oh, okay earlier we had some kind of a manual processes. Those are very good, but when we are having this BPR process in all, now we are having a new system, then now it is not working well. So, sometimes there can be discourages like that within the staff, reducing the number of managers in an organization reduce innovation and creativity. Sometimes when you are implementing a very good BPR in, into the systems, so you will be deciding as you do not need some of the managers in order to operate these manual processes because those processes are in line in online operation now. So, you can remove those managers. So, after removing those managers, the creativity innovation will not come into the organization because the system cannot do the innovation and creativity. Only the people who are working in the organization, they can think and do the innovation and creativity. Can limit on modern ideas as team working and coaching. 
so the modem ideas team work in coaching those concept can be eliminated if you are having a very good bpr process so it means those things can be limit so establishing uh, systems often have valuable but unrecognized features so uh, those are kind of uh, let's say in a in a manual processor there can be supervisors who will be supervised whether the product is done in a correct quality but if you are automated all these things by using the bpr implementation uh, what has happened is there are some unrecognized features like that that will not be available for uh, in the organization so that can be sometime uh, uh, disadvantage or problem in the organization uh, let's say in the manual process uh, you will say that everything automated quality also check automatically then uh, if there are supervisors who supervise that they will think that okay now it is automated we don't need to worry about the the quality so it will be done by the system but in case the, there is a fault in the system and uh, make the product in a wrong way so what will happen is those are taken as unrecognized features that are not identified by the system so th those are can be some problems business for reengineering is concerned with which of the following there is one question fundamental changes in the way an organization functions so i am not going to detail about these questions uh, because in the theory that i have explained it well how many steps are used in bpr processes five steps here yeah, five steps design and build a prototype of the new process is the which one design and build a prototype let's go to that designing a build a prototype is the fifth process likewise uh, you have to identify what are the all the other processes in the uh, bpr right online credit card payment e payment system you may these are very familiar things i am going to describe well about this so there can be e payment system online credit card payment online banking e wallet and money applications digital money and cryptocurrency so paypal is a very good system uh, as e payment systems online banking is a form of what e payment system which of the following is a type of e payment e wallet here yeah, e wallet and money use of mobile phone app technology normally uh, if you are having a mobile phones you can have easy cash so that also a wallet of you <coughs> which of the following is a type of e payment system digital currency yes it's a e payment online banking e payment credit card by using the credit card also what you are doing is using in the online platform you are paying online so all of the above is the answer what is an e ft electronic fund transfer transfer funds electronically there are a variety of ways e payment method can be used b to b example is b to b b to b b to b those are the uh, models some of the e payment uh, method which i use uh, are explained here public way exchange supply centric buy centric b2b so i am rushing to the other slide because we have to start the next chapter so these things are very easy to understand by you by reading the content even uh, risks of e procurement what are the risks in e procurement there also also can be risks so control there can be unauthorized purchases so you may have yes last week what has happened us uh, i uh, imp uh, i put some uh, credit card details in the website some of the website in order to get some information so but uh, ultimately i have uh, clicked somewhere and i didn't know that uh, this month they have uh, 
charge uh, 9 dollars for my credit card. So, that is actually unauthorized payment that what I did was I uh, rejected the card, I stopped the card, then now I do not have any access with that my credit card. So, those kind of unauthorized purchases can be there because of the e procurement. and also uh, cannot deliver the required quality, volume discount, those are the controls actually. Organization risk. So, user may not adapt to the system well. Sometimes uh, earlier that you were doing it manually, now you have done everything in online, but the users who are in the organization, they are the staff, they are not keen, they are not uh, knowledgeable to operate the system. So, uh, that user may not adapt to it well now and they will reject the systems. So, many technical issues actually changing over is very challenging. So, when you are having a very new system, the it is not easy to process with the people and also internal process around the change over is very challenging. <coughs> Data security, spending online means dealing with the security. So, you should have uh, lot of uh, expenses in the security, because you have to secure the data, you have to secure the customers, then you should have a very good secure system, otherwise people will not engage with you to deal with this. Manageable losses spending control. So, we will put send spending decision in the wrong hand internally and management will lose decision making control. So, sometimes you have evaluated the people of the suppliers, you have evaluated suppliers, you have put it put them in the e-procurement system. So, uh, the you do not need management need not to worry about to about procurement, they do not need to take any decisions, automatically purchase will be happening, do not what will happen. So, that decision will be given to some of the manager not by the uh, not for the man, uh, directors of the organization. So, there can be so many hidden things going inside these systems sometimes. Supply chain problems, efficiency and speed can also destabilize the rest of the supply chain. <coughs> when increase the efficiency, the supply chain that you are using is done in manual way. The same supply chain can be taken into e-procurement also, but the speed of delivery has to be increased because you now you will be able to procure many goods now, not like old days. So, your supply chain also has to be happened in a good manner, otherwise that will be failing. Which of the following is a risk associated with the e-procurement? Control is one risk, it is explained here. here. Spending online means dealing with the security issues. What type of procurement risk mentioned in this statement? Data security, dealing with security issues. Data security is mentioned here, we talk about that one here. See. Barriers to e-business and e-commerce adoption. The e-commerce, e-business is not relevant to them. So, what are the barriers for e-commerce and e-business adoption? Sometimes the e-business will not be relevant to some of the people. Staff do not have the required skill and knowledge. If they do not have the required skill to manage this e-commerce e e e operations, what will happen is the whole process will be stopped. The, their customers do not use the e-business. Sometimes the customers in the customer side, they will not be accepting this e-business. They need the manual processes sometimes. So, what are the other barriers? The country wise there can be some barriers internal barriers, the usage charge will be, be discouraged the customers. Sometimes when you are going, to, you know that uh, when having a e-business and e-commerce, 
you can reach the international boundaries but when you are sending some goods to their country sometimes they will charge a lot of taxes they will tax you then there can be so many barriers in other countries so those are inter uh, th those kind of barriers will uh, will damage the business process economic issues still consumer tend to pay cash credit transfers is a uh, enormous barrier because sometimes when you are do, you have to do the payment in uh, uh, online mode but they are not familiar with that most of the customers will be expecting to pay by cash <coughs> and also when paying by credit card there can be so many other charges and transaction security also will be there so because of such kind of economic issues the customer will not be tend to buy the product in online mode uh, culture different languages cultural factor uh, risk and dislike attitude of privacy lifestyle because uh, when you are dealing in internationally in online mode so there can be different from a cultural platform that will not be suited and also due to language issues that will not be suited for some of the countries and uh, some of the people because uh, when people have to buy some product you are using a uh, english uh, uh, language in your website so will that be okay with some of the customers sometimes the customers cannot read those in, in english medium so they don't have a knowledge to buy the product there also so those kind of cultures are there in the market so therefore uh, when uh, when developing these products uh, normally we have seen that they have integrated other other languages as well uh, into the e-commerce platform though that's uh, another another effort that the organization has to do because they are when they want to change those website into different different languages so it's a uh, huge effort that they have to do other organization types also can be some barriers for small and medium sized enterprises there there is a wide range of barriers cost implement the cost of implementation you have to in order to implement the system you have to spend lot of money for uh, uh, internet security and also for uh, infrastructure need for immediate uh, roi so you may need a immediate roi because so these are the other barriers you can uh, understand i have not got to explain those things okay we completed chapter 8 now so we are continuing with the chapter 9 that is uh, from chapter chapter 9 10 and 11 is concerned with marketing marketing uh, the chapter 9 is marketing practices for digital platforms marketing practices okay we'll explain the marketing mix what is marketing mix sometime you may have already learned these things in the, in normally when you as you are going to be accountant you may have learned these things in your some other uh, subject as well but i am going to explain this in, the, uh, in again to you sometime that will be good thing to you to understand it well again marketing mix what is marketing mix is marketing mix has four element and that was extended to another three thereafter when it comes to service industry the product price place promotion people physical evidence and processes are the other two so it is about putting the right product in the right place at the right time and the right place in order to do this one these marketing mix are uh, studied so uh, i'll explain one by one uh, in these slides uh, the product is the service provided to the customer let's say that can be a tangible product or intangible products it means the product that you can see physically also can be in uh, can be the uh, product can be in physical mode and also in the 
uh, online mode uh, which can be intangible. So, uh, let us say uh, car, if you are buying a car through the online, so that is the product that you are referring or can be a consumable good in the supermarket. So, those are easy things that you can understand. The product is the service provided to the customer and the feature of the service. Services provided to client by the accountants, that was our product. So, as an accountant, when you are you know, become accountant, you are going and auditing in some other places. So, what your product is the audit. So, you are auditing, that is the project that you are going to do with them, that is the product that you offer to them. And prices, places, the place is the place where the service is provided as well as the place where the customer receive it. There are two things, the you are, you are the organization, let us say you are the seller, then you, you will deliver that to the customer. So, there are two places that the, where the seller is available, where the customer is available, right. So, product is available with the seller at first and then distribute to the customer thereafter. The seller can be a product producer and also or some retailer or wholesaler or distributor, they, those can be there. So, they will be delivering that product to the customer. The places is where the seller is having the product, places is where the customer is receiving the product. So, it is very understandable to you now. We will go with the next one, price. The air product will have a price based on their features and requirement. The price for services required careful consideration is less tangible to the customer than the physical product. In order to support prices, consumer need to be fully aware of the what services are being provided. Based on the services are being provided to the each customer, each product, provided by the each product, the prices can be varying. Let us say, if you are going to buy a phone, based on the features available in the phone, the prices also can be differentiated. Let us say, you are going to buy a uh, iPhone that iPhone has same features, but different prices. When you are comparing why there is a different prices for same iPhone because of the storage. Sometimes one the the the, the one, one one iPhone will have a 64 megabyte of storage, the other 64 GB of storage, the other one will have a 128 GB of storage. So that is how because of the storage they have increased the prices in the same product. The promotion, how to promote the product, how to display the product in a storefront. So, when you are promoting the product, you have to have different different method in promoting the product, whether that you can be uh, place uh, that you can place in the uh, showroom or else you can place in the website. If it is an online platform, you can take some pictures of the product and place in the uh, website. And also, if you want to further uh, information, you can click on the product inside the on the website, then you can go for more details. And promotion can be a way of word of mouth. So, uh, in CA Sri Lanka, I have this uh, especially, because, the, because of word of mouth that CA Sri Lanka has, uh, has been promoted in everywhere in the world, because of the product that they are offering to the student is the chartered accountancy. If you became a chartered account, accountant, that your future is success. So, you do not have to worry about the thereafter. Then that word of mouth has spread everywhere. So, that is done through the promotions. Positive experience. Consumer reviews, increased trust. So, some of the people will touch the product before purchasing. 
So, those are the uh, things that considered in promotions. People, people report to the staff and sales people who for work for the company. The role of people in the organization is the main concern. So, the role of people in the in your organization there are different category of people directors, managers, deputy managers and also executive people and also co-workers. There are different, different categories of people who are involved in the whole process. So, people uh, issues in marketing may include the following. When it comes to marketing, so we are talking about the marketing concept. So, appearance, appearance also the people also matter. Attitude in dealing with the customer also will be a good value of some of the employees. Some of the employees will not be having and behavior of the people also measured in that aspect and competency of them, perceived competences, commitment to the uh, work. Uh, discretion, confidentiality, integrity, ethics, professionalness. So, that is that is the profile of the profile of people. Actually, when you are working in a company, you will be getting a salary. Why you are getting a salary is based on this profile information. <coughs> Without having you, any company cannot proceed with the product in the market. If they want to sell a good product in the market, they should have a very good people in the market. Let us say if the face people are thinking now, if they can sell it pr the product, that is it. They do not need any other to assist for them, but not in that sense. In your finance division also, they are doing some kind of activities in dealing with your sales and also the, in the production process, production people are the people who will produce the product. So, different different category of people who are involved in the organization will be contributing to the end product. So, that is why they are paying a different uh, salaries for each of their uh, job categories. Process, the system and processes of the organization, we talk about system and process of organization which affect the execution of the services. So, if you are going to channel a doctor, so there is a process. Likewise, if you want to be a chartered accountant, so there is a process. When you want to go uh, ex apply for examination, there is a process. You have to fill the application, you have to submit it, you have to pay the application, uh, pay for the ap examination, then that will be cross check in the uh, examination division, then you will be getting admission and uh, all the information will be located before getting the admissions, uh, admission, examination division has to do so many uh, processes in order to uh, occupy for the examination halls and after uh, sitting for the examination, marking is there, then the releasing of the result and releasing uh, result approval, releasing of result and then that publishing in the website then ultimately you will be become a chartered accountant after completion of all the examination. So, there is a certain process in all. Physical evidence, do we need the physical evidence? Yes, of course. Physical evidence refer to the tangible element that support the service delivery. In marketing, physical evidence represent the tangible aspect of intangible services products of that constitutes the means through which consume customers can judge the quality of the services. Based on the physical evidence, most of the suppliers, most of the company, most of the customers are deciding on the quality. Let us say this uh, CSE Lanka, if it is in a very small pace in in a rural area, not in Colombo 7, the let us say they, they are having a very small office, about 2 to 3 people are there. So, when you visit to CSA Lanka in such, such a uh, working environment, 
So, will you feel to study there? No. You will see that oh, this is a very small place. I, why should I study there? So, likewise the physical evidence is uh, uh, most important thing when deciding on the cost, uh, when deciding the uh, decisions to buy the product. Such as uh, let us say uh, environment of service delivery, logos, layout, staff uniforms, noise level, smell, uh, ambience, uh, supporting reading materials, website design. So, those are the physical evidence that you are showing. So, <coughs> when you are going for an interview, you will have a very good uh, um, suit let us say you will have a tie and coat and also in girls, girls they will be having a, a saris like that. So, you are making your physical present there. Physically you are showing the evidence, you are showing the evidence that you are a good professional to suit for the uh, position. Let us say you are going for an interview, for an interview that is the interview is a chartered accountancy interview chartered accountant interviews, you are, they are going to recruit a chartered accountant. So, if you are going with uh, uh, by having a t-shirt and denim with and with slippers, so will they accept you? No, they will not accept. So, that is the physical evidence that you are showing to the interviewers that you are a professional to suit for the organization. Likewise, in the organization also, when the customer require some thing from you, you have to be appear in a phys physically well with physical evidence. Facilities as vehicle, aeroplane, equipment tools, waning area. So, uh, ok, that is enough for that. So, we will uh, play this video how the coca cola marketing mix implemented welcome to notesmatic your favorite business management and marketing blog today we are going to present a marketing mix of coca cola that includes the 7 peter seconds let's start with an introduction of the us based beverages giant coca cola is one of the two leading brands in the soda industry and the largest brand of non alcoholic beverages in the world the international empire of Coca-Cola spans more than 200 countries. The company has a large product portfolio of sparkling and still beverages. The soda industry has felt the pinch of economic slowdown and post-recession, currency fluctuations have affected the profits of leading soda brands. The popularity of soda drinks has also reduced due to the growing popularity of health drinks and other health trends. Apart from the large market share, Coca-Cola is known for its strong brand image and high customer loyalty. It invests a very large sum each year in marketing and promotion for growing brand recognition and customer engagement. In recent years, it has focused on optimizing its product mix. This marketing mix of Coca-Cola includes its 7 Peter Seconds, product, place, price, promotion, people, processes, and physical evidence. Let's first analyze the product range of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has a large product portfolio of 500 sparkling and still brands. It provides nearly 3,900 beverage choices. Its leading product Coca-Cola is one of the world's most recognized and valuable brands. There are $21 billion brands in its portfolio, of which 19 are available in low or no calorie choices. Here are some of the most known brands in Coca-Cola's portfolio. Coca-Cola, most popular and highest selling soft drink in history and also one of the most recognizable brands in the world. Sprite, a popular lemon-lime flavored soft drink introduced in 1961. Fanta, the second oldest brand from Coca-Cola, introduced in 1940, comes in orange flavor. Diet Coke, known as Coca-Cola Light in many markets. A sugar and calorie free soft drink, introduced in 1982. Coca-Cola Zero, launched in 2005, this Zero Sugar brand acquired the status of a million dollar brand in 2007. Coca-Cola Life, a low calorie drink with cane sugar and stevia leaf extract. Minute Maid, a juice brand acquired by Coca-Cola in 1960. Seal, purified non-carbonated bottled water introduced in 1996. 
Powerade, drink for energy and hydration made with carbohydrates, electrolytes, and fluids. Powerade Zero, sports and fitness drink with electrolytes minus the calories. Simply Orange, premium 100% orange juice available in six varieties. Fresca, caffeine-free soft drink with a unique citrus taste. Glassy Eye Vitamin Water, nutrient-enhanced water beverage available in 26 countries. Del Val, a premium line of juices and nectars sold mainly in Latin America and Central America. Coca-Cola has an extensive beverage distribution system. Its products are sold in more than 200 countries across six operating regions including Europe, Latin America, North America, Pacific, Eurasia and Africa. Coca-Cola sells an average of 1.9 billion servings each day. Traditionally, the company has relied on its bottling partners for the packaging and distribution of its products. As Coca-Cola notes, while many view our company as simply Coca-Cola, our system operates through multiple local channels. Our company manufactures and sells concentrates, beverage bases and syrups to bottling operations, owns the brands and is responsible for consumer brand marketing initiatives. Our bottling partners manufacture, package, merchandise and distribute the final branded beverages to our customers and vending partners, who then sell our products to consumers, Coca-Cola Company. Its bottling partners work closely with customers including grocery stores, restaurants, street vendors, convenience stores, movie theaters, and amusement parks, among many others. Together they execute localized strategies of Coca-Cola Company. These customers sell Coca-Cola products to the final customers. Pepsi is the arch-rival of Coca-Cola and the closest competitor in the beverages segment. Both brands price their products competitively. Prices are not too high to go beyond the average customer's reach and nor too low to give an impression of low quality. Coca-Cola's pricing strategy is aimed at driving brand loyalty. Moreover, due to the decreasing demand for soda products, price competition between Coca-Cola and Pepsi has gotten even intense. The prices grow lower as the size of the package grows bigger. Bulk buyers of the product may have to pay significantly lower prices than ones buying single Coca-Cola products. Due to the intense competition in the soda industry, the top brands spend much on advertising to drive higher sales and revenue. Coca-Cola's marketing expenditure in 2016 was $4 billion. In 2018, the marketing expenditure grew to $4.1 billion. It utilizes both traditional and modern channels to promote its brand and products. Coca-Cola launched its Taste the Feeling campaign in 2016 which unites all of its brands. This one brand approach taken by Coca-Cola marks a significant shift from its previous marketing strategy. Apart from TV ads and outdoor ad campaigns, the company serves its ads across the internet and on social media. Its social media accounts are used to connect with its fans and followers and for customer engagement. There are more than 1,250 promotional videos of Coca-Cola on its official YouTube channel. As competition has kept intensifying in the soda industry, companies are focusing more than ever on the social image and reputation. Coca-Cola is also investing a lot in CSR and sustainability and developing a sustainable supply chain and manufacturing network. Investing in socially beneficial projects has proved beneficial for the company and has strengthened its image in the market. Coca-Cola is also a large employer that focuses on strategic human resources management to help its employees find career growth and job satisfaction. In 2019, the total number of employees working in the Coca-Cola system grew to 86,200 of which 10,100 were working in the United States. Employees are a source of competitive advantage in the 21st century. Therefore, companies like Coca-Cola have implemented human resource management strategies that enable employee empowerment and maximize job satisfaction. The company has also established a system of rewards and recognition that work to drive employee retention higher. The Coca-Cola system includes the Coca-Cola company and its around 225 bottling partners. The international business operations of the company are supported by these bottling partners as well as a large distribution network. The Coca-Cola company sells concentrates and syrups that it produces in its concentrate operations to its bottling partners. This is the main source from which the company generates net operating revenues. The bottling partners of Coca-Cola produce the final product that is sold to the customers worldwide. They combine the concentrates with still and or sparkling water and or sweeteners, depending on the product, to prepare, package, sell and distribute finished beverages. 
The finished product operations of Coca-Cola mainly include the company-owned or company-controlled bottling, sales, and distribution operations. Coca-Cola's physical operations are spread out globally. The physical infrastructure of the company includes its concentrate manufacturing operations, as well as headquarters, and other regional offices in the various corners of the globe. Moreover, we come across a lot of physical evidence related to Coca-Cola's business on a daily basis. Apart from Coca-Cola bottles and promotional material, there is a lot of merchandise inside various retail stores which also counts as physical evidence. The Coca-Cola logo is visible on the packages as well as on advertisements and promotional material. Globally, there is hardly a region where you will not be able to find some evidence of Coca-Cola's business whether it is a large outdoor ad or a small bottle of one of the Coca-Cola beverages. Thanks for watching. Visit otesmatic.com for the welcome to Okay, uh, from that video, I think you got a very good idea about uh, how the marketing mix works in Coca-Cola. So, like that, uh, you can take uh, one example of your, of your organization, you your parents working somewhere or some of uh, your cousins or brother, sister will be working in some of the places. You can get their idea about uh, their uh, marketing and then you can uh, define the marketing mix for them. So, likewise you can get some examples and uh, do a marketing mix for the uh, organization. So, uh, as uh, questions uh, I have given here, uh, how many elephant, uh, uh, elements did the organization original marketing mix have? How many? Initially four, then it was extended to another three. So, uh, why was the marketing uh, mix extended to 7 piece that is for the services extended it was recognized that the original piece did not cover all the issues that should be considered for marketing. So, later stage they identified that the marketing mix had some 4 component that is not sufficient to ex do the marketing mix. So, there when the service industry come into action that seven another three piece also in all and also that also support for the uh, all the industries well right so which of the following is not uh, one of the seven piece price people place principle is not a one of seven please physical evidence referred to what the tangible element that support the service delivery Okay. E-commerce and e-marketing. Actually, we talk about this earlier about the e-commerce. Now, we are talking about e-marketing. E-commerce is the buying and selling of goods and services online. Right? E-marketing is the process of marketing a product or service using internet. It is a simple term that you can remember. So, marketing a product that is why we need e-marketing. Earlier we had marketing only, but now due to the internet and so many development came across uh, uh, in the in, world, in every countries. So, most of the people are tend to do e-marketing because that has become a very good useful tool. Especially in Facebook, there are so many marketing activities and YouTube, uh, those, there are so many activities that can do in e-marketing. Okay. E-marketing has number of characteristics which differentiate it from the traditional marketing. When we compare the traditional marketing and e-marketing, there are some characteristics that can be differentiated with the traditional marketing. What are those? Interactivity. Now, not like early days, you can interact with the people easily by using Facebook. There are different, different medias that you can use for interact with the people. Facebook, in chat forum and also LinkedIn, uh, YouTube via YouTube and also Skype. Uh, there are so many platforms that you can use for interacting with the people. Intelligence, not like all days, now you are very intelligent flat intelligence. It means you can market your products intelligently because you have 
required information, you have required IT knowledge using those that you can spread your message to the customer very quickly. Individual idealization. You can reach the individual customer, you can individualize your products with the customer in e-marketing. So, it is easy to reach the customer, you do not need to physically meet the customer and explain the product. You can use different medias and then explain the, your product to the customer. So, you can customize your products based on the customer's requirement that is called individualization. So, you can market your product individually to each of the customer as individualization characteristic. Integration. You can integrate with different different platforms and also e-marketing uh, payment gateways also can be uh, integrated. There are so many technological involvement can be integrated into e-marketing. When you are marketing, uh, you can involve with so many other uh, systems. Industry structure. So, industry structure also has to be changed when doing the e-marketing. So, not like old days. So, your industry is knowledgeable now. So, you must have a very good IT background and also some other infrastructure in your industry to operate the e-marketing uh, concept. Independent of location, you do not need to worry about the location now. Even you are located in Kalampo, you can deal with the Anradhapula, Polonnaru, some other rural area people, or not like rural area, the very uh, far away people. Uh, very quickly, you can reach them. You do not need to worry about the location. Even they are in Australia or UK, you can reach them very quickly. As question I have given here, e-marketing can be distinguished from traditional, mark, uh, traditional marketing by how many eyes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 eyes. So, you have to remember this, what are those 6 eyes? Interactivity, intelligent, individualization, integration, industry structure, independence of locations. So, there are 6. What is e-marketing? Marketing a product or service using, using internet. Here it is given. E-marketing versus traditional branding. Traditional branding and e-marketing. We see what is this? A branding. What is branding? It is a name, symbol, term, mark or design that enable customer to identify and distinguish the products of one supplier from those offered by competitors. So, base the, have you seen the CSE Lanka logo? When you see the CSE Lanka logo, you know that this is CSE Lanka. When you see SIMA logo, you know that this is SIMA. When you see uh, uh, double AT logo, you know that double AT logo. Likewise, the branding is kind of a symbol or name or image or design that enable customers to identify. Brands convey a message of confidence. What is this confidence? Confidence. Brand convey a message of confidence. It means uh, that you have a confidence with CSE Lanka. You know that if you become a chartered accountant, your future is success. You will be success in future. So, that is because of the CSE Lanka. So, the when you see the CSE Lanka image, okay, you know whatever the product implemented by the CSE Lanka will be winning, will be beneficial for us. Because of the brand image, you know that you have a very good confidence with the brand. Brands are powerful push factor for customers. 
if you have a very good brand that is a very powerful prospect for the consumer let's say uh, if you are buying a uh, let's say elephant house you know the elephant house ice creams are very good i'll i'll assume that it's good right so then uh, when you are buying a product with the same name same brand so you know okay elephant house ice cream are very good now we have some shorties or some other snack with the same brand okay this also will be very good so why why should i uh, why shouldn't i buy that one so we will tend to buy that product so you are buying the uh, elephant house ice cream earlier so you are familiar with the brand you know the taste of that because of the brand powerfulness you push to buy some other products so because of the brand powerfulness you push to buy the product for online retailers branding is important for consumer trust so online retailing also branding is very much important because uh, you don't need to physically visit the place and see the products because of the brand you know this product is very good so you don't need to worry about the uh, the physical percent of the product you can just buy it from the internet people tend to buy product of established brand because trust that product promise of value quality okay uh, brand convey a message of what there's a question confidence the brand will put a confidence quality reliability to their target market e marketing versus traditional branding in e marketing versus traditional branding we talk about branding as the number 1 number 2 is uh, visual identity identity visual identity identity determines the look and feel of the product both offline or in the digital space look and feel when you see the products you look it and sometimes you touch it and you feel that is good so uh, we beneficial to match up the visual identity with the branding and the website associated with the organization a consumer can immediately connect the product or service with the online identity so visual identity is most important in traditional market branding you can show the product in front of the customer right this is the customer you are showing the products but when it comes to e marketing what will happen you cannot physically show the product but you should have a very good visuals to show it in the website let's say if you are uh, putting a uh, laptop as the uh, selling product in the website so you will put only uh, let's say hp pro book 4430 hp pro book pro that the product right you put only the name of that one then uh, customer will come and uh, visit the uh, website okay they see the product and also the features and also the prices they don't see that physically they don't see the visual identity so then that product selling will be failing because the customer will not buy the product they go they can't see the product so then you should have a very good visual identity in the website in order to show this is the product that we are so selling to you that is how you can build the visual identity as a question what is another name for look and feel is visual identity okay. e marketing tools what are the other e marketing tools acquiring customer through e business technologies 
సెర్చ్ ఇంజిన్ ఆప్టిమైజేషన్ దట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద వెరీ గుడ్ ఈ మార్కెటింగ్ టూల్స్ రైట్ అండ్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద సెర్చ్ ఇంజిన్ ఆప్టిమైజేషన్ ఈస్ వెన్ యూ సెర్చ్ ఇన్ ద వెబ్సైట్ ఇన్ గూగుల్ దట్ యూ విల్ గూగుల్ అబౌట్ అకౌంటింగ్ వెన్ యూ ప్రెస్ టైప్ అకౌంటింగ్ సో సమ్టైమ్స్ సిఎస్ఇ లంక వెబ్సైట్ విల్ కమ్ సో యూ హ్యావ్ ఆప్టిమైజ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ ద సెర్చ్ ఇంజిన్ బికాస్ ఇట్ విల్ కమ్ ఇన్ ద అప్ ఆఫ్ ద సెర్చ్ రిసల్ట్ న్యూస్ గ్రూప్ అండ్ ఫోరమ్స్ సో ఇన్ న్యూస్ గ్రూప్ అండ్ ఫోరమ్స్ యూ క్యాన్ మార్కెట్ యువర్ ప్రొడక్ట్ so you can market your product in the news group forums in the, in in in, in, uh, in uh, there can be news site so in those places you can uh, brand your product there can be news letters you can uh, send the news letters via email and various type of marketing uh, ads can be sent via emails and also in chat uh, in chat forums so you can send the news letters uh, website links building and partnership campaign uh, repro reciprocal links reciprocal links are what it is something like in the next slide i'll explain in that turn no 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 actually reciprocal links are something like uh, uh, i will be uh, uh, giving some link in the website right in the website we will be uh, linking uh, some other website links then that will be redirected to that uh, website uh, likewise if you have so many web link in your uh, website so you will having a very good lead in your website it means there will be so many visitors into your website so those are kind of a partnership campaigns uh, th- that you can do with some other uh, website so actually this is a very good tool most of the organizations are using that when you go to some other some website you can see some uh, logos are appeared there when you click on the logo that will redirect to some other site some other web pages so that th- those are the reciprocal uh, link that is uh, insert uh, that is available in those uh, the website viral marketing you can do viral marketing when you upload a video viral video that will spread everywhere so you can do viral marketing to gain more uh, uh, more uh, views from the customers banner advertising you can advertise as banners newspaper magazine and there are so many uh, in e marketing also there are so many uh, e tools uh, available in the market and there are so e magazine e newspaper so you can advertise there sticky customers who are the sticky customers in order to identify this what who are the sticky customers i'll give you one uh, one real example what is sticky is sticky me something you paste let's say sticky note have you seen sticky note uh, some yellow color different color sticky notes are there so when you want to remember something you put some kind of things and we, you write something and paste it somewhere it has some glue so from that you can place it somewhere so sometimes you write something and uh, paste it uh, in some files and when when it when there is a very big document that you are written let's say about uh, 100 pages document so you are reading is when there are important thing you take uh, tiki notes and paste it there then you can later review that likewise tiki notes are kind of uh, uh, pasting of uh, some notes right so it sticky means like pasting 
place means you are sticky, your customers are also can be sticky. It means they do not leave from you, they are attached to you. Customers who will bring repeat business are sticky customers. Right? So, when the sticky words comes, please remember about the sticky note that you will never forget about uh, who are the sticky customers are. Loyalty is difficult to achieve. Actually, uh, in order to be, be uh, to ta take this, uh, uh, to become this repeat business with sticky customers, you have to build up the loyalty with the customers. It is very difficult actually, it takes time. Normally, it does not happen within uh, one day or two day. So, it takes time to uh, achieve these st sticky customers. Uh, what is sticky customer? Customers who will bring repeat business are sticky customers. How much marketers encourage sticky customers? through other promotion campaigns, different different medias, you are going to make sticky customers. You will be having customers, but you want to make them sticky customers in order to repeat business, to make them as repeat customers. Repeat customers are, they are buying a product continuously without going with the other products. Banner advertising is what? Graphic strict strip commonly seen across the top of the web page. Which of the following is a technique to achieve the acquisition of the customer using e-business technology? Acquisition of customer. Viral marketing? Yes, through the viral marketing you are acquire the customer. Banner advertising you are doing is, is search engine as my search also you are doing the same. So, answer is this. Online community. So, there are different communities in online, not like in uh, same thing uh, which was available in physically, let us say accountant. There are some uh, accountant forums. So, there are some people has as the community. There are some uh, car owners community and uh, there are some uh, elders community, youngest community and uh, based on the product users, there are some community. If you go to the, uh, if you search on the uh, Facebook, there are some so many groups. Let us say if you are having a BMW car, BMW lovers club, BMW lovers group. So, there are some communities like that. So, in here, we are talking about the online community, which is dealing in online mode. So, uh, it is a virtual community, online community is a virtual community, whose members interact with each other privately via the internet. Type of online community, who are they? Community circumstances. So, in the next slide, I am explaining this. So, I am going to the next one. Communities of practice. So, uh, community of practice is a group of people who share a concern or passion. Who share what? Share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. So, as an example, accountant. So, this is a good example. So, Accountant, they are the professionals who are involved in this one, and it is uh, it has a community. So I think that from this one uh, you can understand who are the communities of practice. They are a concern or a passion for something they do. So they are doing accountancy. So that's why they have a accountancy community. Community of uh, circumstances. A community of circumstances is similar to the community of practice, it's like also the community of practice, except that it is driven by the position, circumstances, life was experience, uh, rather than uh, uh, 
shared interest example might uh, include cancer suffers uh, suffer you patient using a support or news group so there can be a news group uh, uh, supporting group who will support for cancer patient so that's a kind of a circumstance it's a uh, thing going on uh, because he company say is a kind of a similar verse incidents let's say incidents so uh, based on some of the incidents based on some of the circumstances so there can be some community develop as an example in order to help for the uh, cancer patient there's a news group community of purpose is a community of people who are going through the same process are trying to achieve a similar objective developing a green environment let's say uh, there's a purpose uh, in sri lanka eco uh, systems green environment those who support for the green environment will be gathered together and develop a online community in facebook there can be a environment uh, friendly group the eco ecosystem group and likewise uh, there are different different uh, uh, due to different different purposes of the community they have group together so that is called the community of group for purpose community of interest because of different interests they have group into together interest of base community is a community uh, of people who share a common interest of fashion uh, people exchange ideas and thought about the given fashion but may may how little about each other outside this area so based on some interested areas let's say uh, 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 cricket players they will have a different interest they will have a different community so they are uh, chatting with each other about the uh, things that they want to do so likewise based on the the, the requirement there are so many communities in all what is an online community a multi way online environment where number members encourage each other to contribute content or interact what is a community of interest here this is what they talk about members who share a hobby or interest here as a hobby there are can be some people who are doing a uh, collecting of stamps in uh, in our childhood also we did that on huh? collecting of stamps so there can be a commit like that and there are uh, bicycle riders cyclists and also motorbike riders and there can be different different hobbies and inter- interests based on that they can group together opt in emails what is this opt in emails so i am going to uh, explain this in brief not going to explain in in, uh, in big way because uh, those are simple thing that you can understand opt in emails are promotional emails that have been requested by the individual receiving them sometime when you go to some uh, uh, website they will uh, prompt uh, some uh, information say, asking that i do you want to take promotional emails from us then you when you click on that you are opting to get those email it means you are agreed to receive emails from them so those are called opt-in emails so opt-in uh, what are opt-in emails promotional emails that have been requested by individual receiving of them uh, you may have seen that this in different ways uh, when you are logging to some uh, website uh, they tend to click on some uh, icon saying a uh, yes or no what they have asked is uh we would like to send some promotional emails do you like you say you like it that there are some site if you say no you cannot view the website if you say yes they will allow you to access the website in then they are forcibly make you 
opt in it means you will be receiving email there after from their uh, promotional campaigns cookies what are these cookies cookies are a technology that allow a website to remember individual visitors surfing and purchase history and preferences actually you may have seen this uh, when you log into some website there are some cookies that they ask to accept otherwise sometimes you will be able to play some videos and some of the uh, flash images uh, from the from their website then when you click cookies that will be stored in your web browser when you go to that website again that cookies will pass to their web servers and retrieve the information that they have used it is the 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 theoretical way that i will explain how it works you get on the web web and request information from the website and when the web site server replies it send the cookies then go to the website then the server that will send the cookies to you to accept it once you accept data which uh, which your computer puts on your hard drive and then now it is saved in your hard drive when you get online to return to the website your computer will send cookies back he will be directing with the uh, with those website and then bring those cookies into the uh, uh, current website that you have opened so likewise uh, why why they are having these cookies is then automatically you are linked with their system whatever you do sometimes they will be gathering those information to their website most of the uh, people they are not enabling cookies of the website as a security reason because sometimes the if you have in the very good uh, uh, if you have any uh, have some information that has to be secured sometimes those information also can be retrieved by some of the hackers that has happened in uh, the world the sometimes the when the hackers want to send some uh, thing to your computer they will put some cookies to accept the once we accept everything will be transferred to the their their personal machines so such kind of things are there but if, if it is a trusted site we don't want to worry about that we can't accept that then you will be able easily uh, retrieve the information yeah what are cookies and uh, so in this uh, video i think it will be clear to you about what the cookie is browser or http cookies are text files that contain packets of information about your browsing history they help websites recognize your computer so that they can serve content much faster when you return they also store details such as your username and password this way you don't have to re-enter your credentials each time you check into a website apart from better usability and faster loading speeds cookies are also useful for marketers for instance suppose you're looking up cameras on amazon after you leave the site you might notice related ads on social media this level of personalization is possible because your browser lets amazon read your history from your perspective you don't have to take any action apart from agreeing to cookies as you enter the site cookies are generally safe to use and don't contain any malware here are some of the common examples you will encounter session cookies which are deleted as soon as your session ends persistent cookies which are used for website authentication secure cookies which are used by encrypted websites as protection against hackers third-party cookies which are found on pages with ads that grant access to external parties even if you don't click on any of the ads and finally zombie cookies which are troublesome as they can install permanently on your computer even if you opt out the last two types cause a lot of concern since they track and store data without your explicit permission or knowledge depending on the country there are laws that regulate the use of third-party cookies for instance businesses with eu-based customers must follow the GDPR and the e-privacy directive. GDPR states that online identifiers such as cookies 
qualify as personal data, so companies can only process them with the user's consent. This is why you often see cookie opt-in messages as you enter a website. Not all cookies are bad though. On the contrary, many are essential for the site to function correctly. With all that said, here are some practical tips to keep your online privacy in check. Review your browser's privacy settings. Delete cookies every so often. Use a proxy server. Browse in private mode. Avoid questionable sites and keep your browser up to date. In a nutshell, browse. Okay, I think from that video you got a very good idea about what is cookies. So there are some cookies that you can accept and uh, that there are some cookies that you can uh, you can um, delete. Actually. Uh, there can be so many third party cookies that will harm your computer sometimes. So, it is easy to uh, interact with the website if you accept the cookies, because uh, most of the trusted sites, uh, are, uh, if, if there are so many trusted sites, trusted site, you can accept the cookie of them, then it is easy for you to uh, deal with them. What is a cookie? That is one question technology that allows the website to remember individual visitors. So, they are remembering that you have visited there. So, Amazon also the index uh, some of video it shows so how the Amazon uh, check your browser, because if you have browse something that will appear get it appear to your um, uh, emails. If you are login with the Amazon. So, your emails the information are there when you browse something that information also goes to them and they will send some of the promotional emails. As an example, I have seen that uh, I log on to ikman.lk uh, one week ago, then I uh, search some cars there. Then uh, later on there were some opt-in emails coming to me that says about there are some uh, new cars uh, published in the website, you can refer to the same. So, I search some car, the same cars which was published again, same same type of car which, which published again was appeared in my emails, was, uh, in, the, in, the, in the apps, sorry. So, those are kind of uh, cookies that have accepted by me. So, automatically they review what we are doing and then sending some Actually, actually that was a very good thing for me, because I when there is a new things comes, it appears on my screen. Uh, so, uh, likewise they remember individual visitors surfing and also purchase history, history and references. What can the organization gain from utilizing cookies? What the organization gain? Set information is placed on the visitors hard disk. And when they visit the site, this allows the organization to track the user each time the user visit the website. They can track the information, they can track the user. So, it is easy for the organization to see what type of user is accessing the system, because their information are uh, retrieved by using these cookies. E-tailing product and services, e-tailing or electronic retailing. So, you know retail business, e-tailing means electronic platforms are embedded to this, then it became e-tailing. It is the sales of goods and services via the internet and can be B to B or B to C, business to business or business to consumer require to manage full end to end customer interaction. Full end to end customer interaction can be managed. Requirement for e-tailing what are those? Strong brand should be there, visual interaction, a product and service name, share a website name, easy searchable and show in the top result of the search engine result. So, those are the requirement. What is e-tailing? There is a question. Electronic retailing. E-tailing is electronic retailing. You know what retailing is? 
So electronic word is added here, then it became electronic retailing. Requirement for e-tailing. So one requirement we talk about strong branding, you should have a very good strong branding. Strong website should be there, without a website you can't do these things. Website must be attractive, you should have very good attractive website, well defined customer interfaces, easy to use, attracting and retaining customers in the website. So that is one requirement. And also efficient distribution trainer, it also a requirement in detailing. You can have a website, you can have a brand, you can have a website. But you should have a distribution channel also to do what? To distribute the product to the customer. Otherwise, the whole process will, will be failing if you do not have a efficient distribution channels. So, there can be some channel like distribution, physically movement, which you know transporting goods from the point of manufacturer to the large center warehouse. This is the final physical transformation of the goods. Let us say from the distribution and delivery. There are two things. You may feel that these two things are same. No, there is a difference. What is this? From the manufacturer to the wholesaler or some other warehouse, there is a distribution. That is mentioned here as the distribution of goods. And the delivery is from final physical transportation to, transportation to the customer. So, from the retailer to the customer, there is a method of transporting. So, there are two things mentioned here. What is the distribution channel? A arrangement used by a manufacturer to deliver goods from the production facility or faci factory to the customer. So, from the production factory, from the factory to the customer, you are selling that. Right? This is the factory. So, there can be some retailing shops that also will deliver to them. So, uh, the answer is clear to you now. Aspect of logistics and physical distribution. When distributing uh, location of warehouse is a thing that we have to discuss actually that warehouse uh, where it is located. When uh, in distributing, there are some logistics involved. So, there can be so many logistic activities involved when the location is uh, far away. Method of transportation, transport by ro road, air, railway, what is the method that you are going to transport? Whether air, whether or by ship, to road. Site of size of transportation, large trans, if it is a large transport, you should have a ship in. If it is a oil transport, you should have a ship. If it is a kind of, you have to select the transport in measured and also the size of the transport. Size of the transport vehicle, whether you take a ship or whether you take a bike or whatever. Effective online marketing. Read to um, reach to much more subgroup of individual based on previous likes, purchase history, interest, background, other demographics, and other social media contacts. When doing the very good effective online marketing, you have to concern about all of these factors: purchase history of the people, and interest they have, and background of them, and demographic. Uh, details age wise and also uh, location wise and those are the information that you have to concern in when doing very good effective online marketing. 
strong customer data analysis. So, big data today is highly valuable. So, you can have different data mining and data analysis technique to analyze what the customer required. So, strong customer data analytics is a very good point when doing the online marketing. The contact list of potential customer you can have and they are interested in purchasing. The statement data is the new oil is credited to mathematician Sweet Humbly in 2006. And although not exact in the analogy, the statement is certainly considered true. Data is the new oil. It's like a new oil to a car. The data also like that. If you have very good data, it's like a, uh, a new oil to a car. You can uh, do different different techniques to do the online marketing if you have very good data and very good data mining techniques. So you can uh, get those benefit to market in the online marketing platforms. One of the main data mining model is Descriptive is one of the meta mining model, which was, was credited to mathematician civil slip humbly in 2006. Data is the new oil. He is talking about data is the new oil. He tell him this model, I think this is a simple thing that I am not going to explain. So, next one, the benefit of e-tailing for organization. So, what are the benefit in e-tailing? Low staffing cost. If you have an electronic platform for retailing, that is called the retailing. So then, you are low staffing cost. Salaries and wages, insurance and benefit can be reduced. You don't have much more staff to handle these situations, handle these transaction because that is uh, in online mode. Increase machine learning. There can be chat box. You may have seen that when you, who are the chat box means, when you log into some website, there are some uh, helpers with the image, they will come and ask any help you need. When you click on that, you ask some question, they will reply. That is not the human being replying. That is the robot, like uh, software, that asks, get your question and answer for that. There, are, there is a very big question bank inside them. They know what the answer to be given for the question asked by the uh, customers. Increase use of robotic and automation. In the factories, you can have uh, robotic uh, automations. Then it is easy for you to uh, deal with the process and the ability to review customer purchase. So, you can review the customer purchases. You can evaluate the customers individually and see how they have purchased the product from you. A rapid turnaround for stock control to ensure product availability. Actually, uh, stock control also will be easy when doing this retailing business. Good use experience for the customer. Giving a very good use experience to the customer, which should provide a positive shopping experience. So, they do not need to come to come to your home, uh, place physically and see the goods. You can do it uh, by using e-tailing. Positive shopping experience reflect with the following. If the positive experience is there with the customer, what it reflects? Utilization of storing details of reuse. Photos, image, product, or full description. So, normally uh, they will say, Oh, this is a very good website. When I visited there, I get a very positive experience with them because they are very friendly. They have very good photo images. They are fighting searching very good. Uh, they are detailing the characters and term to, terms, of, uh, terms of any products, reducing additional cost. So, these are kind of uh, positive uh, shopping experience. Okay. 
so you can read and understand those and those are simple terms that you can understand directly which of the following is a benefit of e-tailing lower staffing cost correct it's a benefit including salaries and insurance increase machine learning chat robots are there yes we talk about that able to review and analyze the customer purchase data so using big data using data mining techniques analytic techniques you can do those so answer is all of the above the number d which of the following is a benefit to the customer when engaging in e-tailing payment details can be stored securely what are the restriction and limitation of e-tailing for organization there can be so many limitation in the organization when dealing with e-tailing consumers are impatient they want the product quickly once they order from the uh, uh, let's say if you order if you go to the uh, shop and buy it then you see the product and buy it and put it in your car and come home but when you order from the website you are waiting till the product received to you so that is the impatient they will have so if you are getting delay they will join with other sellers so next time they will not be buying and also if your website is very slow they will not be waiting with until it loads they are impatient they will join with some other seller some other website to buy the product if the product features are not suiting them well not supporting them well they will change their decision and go with some other uh, website so those are the kind of restrictions and limitations that the e-tailing have and also negative impact due to poor interaction poor delivery poor relationship so those are the things has to be concerned otherwise the customer will not be retaining with you they will be joining with some other sellers some other website invent in the quality of their website and e-commerce experience so earlier you were doing the physical uh, development in the, within your office in the showroom but your showroom is now in the online platform so what you have to do you have to invest a lot to make the quality website and also very good uh, features to be embedded in the into e-commerce to dealing in purchasing invest in quality appearance layout and ease of navigation of website let's say the if there are if it is very difficult to navigate in the website that the retailing business is handling by you when you are handling the retailing business in your organization if the website is very uh, uh, is not easy to navigate it means not easy to browse then what will happen is customer will not retain in that website they will tend to leave on the website find a very good website that will provide the answer for your questions answer for your requirement if a customer becomes the one question i'll explain if a customer becomes distinguished disillusions with an e-tailing business how might this affect the business could lead to poor or negative brand image so you are losing the brand image so that's why we are telling you should have to concern these things when implementing a very good detailing system which of the following is a potential limitation or risk to the customer when engaging in detailing risk to the customer customer security and data can be compromise if the organization is hacked restriction and limitation of e-tailing for the customer what are the restriction and limitation we talk about this earlier also going again customer security and data can be compromised if the organization is hacked 
if the organization is hacked, no one will come to our website to purchase. Difficult to purchase in a different geographical zone due to data protection zone. Sometimes in some of the uh, countries and some of the zones, some of the because of the data protection uh, activities, privacy controls, so you will not be able to uh, handle some of the features of your website due to those restrictions. Geographically, sometimes you will not be able to launch those products. More complex system of authentication can be irritating. So, when you go to the website, so there can be so many authenticators. You have to fill your birthday, everything inside the website. It takes a lot of time to purchase one product. So, you are because they asked to put your information where are you located uh, the, the, there are different different questions they will be asking before selling the product so that is irritating for them they will be then using other system uh, by avoiding in getting the goods from you your system because it is more complex not easy for non technical minded people it is not easy for non technical minded people because if they are not uh, knowing how to buy from the internet, how they can buy? They do not know how to buy it. Then it what happen? Uh, customers will not be retaining in that website. They will leave to other website and buy the product. So, there can be some people like, as an explain you, they have a very limited technical knowledge. If your browser, if your web system used for e-tailing is uh, providing the platform like uh, is it easy to buy, then those non-technical people go and buy from that system, from the e-tailing system. Otherwise, for non-technical people, they do not know much about internet. So, they are worrying about buying from that uh, website because there are so many complex authentication and scenarios. Benefit of e-tailing for the customer. What the customer get when you doing uh, e-tailing? Payment details can be stored securely. They can store the payment details. No need to re-input. De delivery and payment details. You can uh, you can uh, input the data in the website when you log in next time. You don't need to input the uh, your information because it is stored there. You can log as a get and uh, do kind of a experience with the products. We'll open shop more when it's easier to one click procedure. You just click on that, then you can do purchase it. Password can now be stored safely because cookies will allow easy access. When you are logging at the first time, you are storing some information in the website. You have filled the forms and you have taken the login access. Then, when you are logging next time, those information are stored through the cookies that will enable and then you can do the purchasing. You do not need to type the password again and again to access the website for purchasing. Enable promotions such as coupon, dealing and discounts. So, when you are buying online, they will give some online discounts. If you buy online only, you will be getting these discounts. Such kind of promotional mechanisms are there. So, then it is a good thing for the customers to buy online. Which of the following method helps a product or service to stand out from the competitors? Com product or service stand out from the competitors. A brand that is visually enticing. So, then it is a good thing. Brand that also shares a website name is a good thing. A brand that also a product or service name. So, answer is all of the above. What is the user experience? UX, a well defined customer interface. It is not that the well good user experience. UX. 
characteristics of, of e marketing the 6 i's model so here we are going to talk about what is what are the 6 i's model in e marketing 6 i's what are those 6 i's interactivity digital medium allow consumer to interact with online business digital medium allows consumer to interact with online business interactivity so through this facebook instagram snapchat so you are interact with in the customer this is where one of the characters are there charge of email marketing 6 is model is concerned on that interactivity is concerned on that interaction between organization and their customers so in order to interact they use different different technique like through the website they chat through the emails facebook instagram there are so many activities that they can interact so interactivity is one thing in six size intelligence digital media is a powerful platform to gather low cost marketing research information on consumer purchasing habits personal details perception of the business product store necessary information web analytics based on the data available with you and also in the big data you can analyze the market and everything so you are most intelligent in the market because you have the information in your hand individualization so you may have seen that the websites are individualized for your requirement Communication can be tailored to the individuals. I have seen one website uh, that is uh, selling uh, uh, shirts. So when you want to go uh, make uh, have, have a shirt, normally what you do in the physical mode, you go to the shops and buy it and wear it and see whether it is okay or not. The same wearing technique can also be embedded in those systems. What they did was, they asked you to upload a uh, video, uh, upload a photo of you. Then you uploaded it. Once you uploaded, they asked you to match the shirt that you are going to buy. Once you bought it, once you selected it, they will uh, paste that uh, shirt with your body. Then you can see the appearance uh, with your photo. That is uh, how they have individualized. So, as another example, when you refer to the specific cars at for a website, and then when the car is listed for the sales, that is will appear on your screen as a message. So, as I said to you, uh, when I want to say some uh, uh, cars selling in some website, uh, let's say as an example, log into ikman.lk. So, I search for some uh, cars, new cars uh, coming for sale, uh, are they are for sale. So, I search on that. When there is another car, car will be listed in the ikman.lk in the same type. So, that will be appeared as a message to me that new car is arrived. So, likewise, they can individualize for you. Interaction. It's sorry, integration. Integration with other marketing channels allow consumer to reach multiple touch points to re research and re reach a decision about the product and services. So, sometimes some of the uh, website that they allow to compare their product with some other website. So, there can be some integration. So, they are integrated with some other service providers of some uh, website. They will do the comparisons the price comparison, product comparison, so you can deal with them uh, to have their support. And uh, another example where a customer may receive a voucher when taking a purchase for a future discount or a 
who can claim reward via organization website through website you, they can have rewards and vouchers for the discount industry structure e marketing can bring about challenge changes to the entire structure of the industry so earlier you may have some boundaries like you are dealing with colombo customers only but when it comes to e tailing or e business e platforms you can deal with any other part of the country so increase in the market boundaries you can increase the market boundaries investing in e-commerce and data it system so you will have to change the entire structure of the industry independent of location you don't want to worry about the location even you are located in uh, australia or uk it doesn't matter which e-marketing model was developed by McDonnell and Wilson the six eyes marketing right it is given there so I explain that one mm, interactive intelligent and individualization na choose the most correct answer is some characteristics of six eyes Okay, so conclude the chapter we need around, let's say, wait for a minute. Okay. Search engine optimization. What is search engine optimization? Search engine optimization is uh, show at the top of the search engine result. When you search your website in the search engine, let's say you, if you take the Google, if you search there, so your website will come at the first. So that is how you can do the search engine optimization using uh, by the help of those so search engines. Method and tools used for SEO, search, search engine result page, search engine result page are the pages displayed by the search engine in the respond to the query by the user. You are querying something, when you query uh, that will appear in the uh, search engine as a result. The main concept component of SERP is the listing of results that are returned by the search engine in response to the keyword query. You are typing a keyword, then they, they will provide the result. Range, page ranking. The basic purpose of page ranking is the list web pages from the most important to the least important. Reflecting on the search engine result page when the keyword is search. So, uh, from the next video that you may learn very well about what is the search changing application let's look at that search engines are an inherent part of our day-to-day -day lives want to research a holiday or buy a new coat google it with the world's online information at our fingertips we trust search engines to provide the most relevant and valuable results for our search this trust in search engines means that ranking at the top can be incredibly valuable for businesses enter seo the ultimate goal of seo be visible to the right people at the right time. That's all well and good, but a brief look into SEO can leave you feeling confused. How does it work? What is spam? How long does it take? It's true, there are a lot of factors to take into account. Luckily for you, we're here to explain the core principles. It's not magic, it's not trickery. It's all about relevance, value and authority. Search engines are businesses. The sheer volume of searches means they can charge people to advertise on their platform. They want to keep people searching, so it's in their interest to continually deliver great search results. And it's in our interest as SEOs to make it clear to Google that your website is the best result. 
It all starts with research. Who are you trying to target? How do they search? Which searches are used by the most people? What are your competitors doing? We need to get an in-depth understanding of your industry, how people search, and your goals. All this research is great, but it needs to be applied to have an effect. Imagine the internet is a vast library of information, and the search engine is the metaphorical librarian. We need to provide structure and clarity to increase our chances of being returned for a search result. The clearer each web page is, the easier it is for Google to categorize it and understand the value it offers the user. This is often called technical SEO or on-site optimization. Creating solution and value-led content underpins any successful SEO campaign. It helps to build authority, target buyer personas and provide solutions, increasing traffic and brand exposure. Great SEO does not create content for the sake of it. Our content targets specific people at specific times. It influences purchasing decisions. It develops authority. We're constantly creating engaging content, targeting your market and increasing conversions. So we've done the research, got a perfectly optimized site and your content is awesome. We can further boost your rankings through gaining links to your site. View them as votes, likes or just a good old fashioned thumbs up. We're not talking about rubbish directories that nobody uses. We're talking about relevant websites that can deliver real traffic. Think digital PR. Remember the content we're producing? Well, that's the holy grail. Produce content that's so good that people find your content and link to it organically. One piece of content, multiple links. Our digital world allows us to track and record data on just about anything. It's our job to highlight and utilize the data that can provide a real impact. Analytics and reporting are not there to bombard you with confusing numbers. They are there to help make things clearer. So there you have it, a whistle-stop tour of SEO. Of course, if you want to talk about it. Okay, what is search engine optimization? A way organizations can leverage the searching habit of users. Okay. Customer relationship marketing. So, uh, customer relationship marketing, what is that? Customer relationship marketing is using marketing resources to retain rather than supply attract new customer, simply attract new customer. So, we need this kind of uh, techniques in order to retain the customer. You can get the customer seen, but retaining is very difficult. If you want to retain, you should have a very good customer relationship. Otherwise, you, that customer will not be retaining with you. So, you should have sticky customer. We talk about sticky customer. If you want to have sticky customers, you must have a very good customer relationship. Otherwise, you will not be getting them in. Sales and marketing staff should look for ways to create long term relationship. So, you are going to have long term relationship not like short term relationship. So, by having those long term relationship, you are retaining the customer with you, otherwise they will be joining with some other customers, some other sellers. So, yeah, customer relation management system is the establishment, development, maintenance and optimization of long term mutually valuable relationship between consumer and organization. Okay, it is a simple term that you can understand directly. What does CRM for? Customer relationship management. In marketing, which of the following best defined CRM? The use of marketing resources retain rather than simply interacting. Right. In marketing, which of the following best define customer relationship management? The use of marketing resources to retain rather than simply interaction. Yes, same thing is given. Okay. Ok, 
देखिए ट्रांसैक्शनल मार्केटिंग वर्सेस रिलेशनशिप मार्केटिंग व्हाट इज ट्रांसैक्शनल मार्केटिंग व्हाट इज रिलेशनशिप मार्केटिंग इन ट्रांसैक्शनल मार्केटिंग सिंगल सेल्स इज देयर इन ट्रांसैक्शनल मार्केटिंग पार्ट्स इन द इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफ कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप नॉट विद द सिंगल सेल्स प्रोडक्ट फीचर्स आर देयर कस्टमर बेनिफिट व्हाट द कस्टमर गेटिंग इज द कंसर्न short pay off they log into the system pay and go but long pay off they are retaining the customer they know that customer will come again and do the uh, do the products purchase less emphasize strong emphasize customer service and resolution of customer issues so they are resolving the customer issues they are not worrying about these people are not worrying about that they give less emphasis on service quality is the concern of production quality and the concern of everyone so it's a concern of everyone quality has is should be there always otherwise they don't uh, we, they will not be having a good relationship marketing competitive commitment should be there high customer commitment competitive commitment is there because in the competitive market and also customer commitment is there we are highly committed with the customer because of the relationship building persuade communication to the market regular communication to the consumer always regularly update their promotional campaigns all promotional emails will be sent to them not like this transactional marketing so always they are engaging with the customer so that is the now it is clear to you i think about this what is relationship marketing is so marketing crm will be finishing with this slide then we'll conclude the this session why crm is an important consideration in marketing because of loyalty you are taking repeat purchases you are taking sticky customers you are retaining the customers so you are building up what you are building up the loyalty with you with your organization the cost retaining existing customer than attracting new customer is cost reduction because if you are rather than attracting new customers the best thing is to retain the customers and attract the new customers first of all we have to concern on retaining customers rather than attracting new customers because you can attract the new customer that's all right but retaining is the difficult thing because you will have to spend more in retaining the customers revenue and profit existing uh, in ma mature market existing customer provide the most likely source of future revenue and earning so if you are um, uh, retaining customers you can target your revenue you can target the next year revenue if you have very good repeat customer if you have very good retaining of customers then you are target is achieved already extending the product range you are extending the different different products in order to have a very good customer relationship management so extend the range of product that the company sell makes no sense if existing customer cannot be retained so you will have a very good sale and extending the product range so not only one product so if you have one product and you are marketing only that product later on the customer will think okay the, these people will have only one product why should i go with only this one product why can't i vary from the other products and go with other suppliers so they will be thinking of in such a way so therefore extending the products range is a very good thing in order to retain customer in order to have a very good customer relationship management so those are the important consideration you have to concern on when doing customer relationship marketing okay uh, we stop uh, up to this side right so with the next session we start with the customer versus consumer and complete the chapter 9 okay thank you